The Frontier X is a continuous ECG monitor that measures key physiological metrics from your heart and lungs. The device is very lightweight, portable, and waterproof. It connects to your mobile phone via Bluetooth, either on iOS or Android. The device has a single blue button. Press it once and it wakes the device from sleep mode. You can also see there are some key physiological metrics from your last workout that are displayed on the device along with the device memory and battery life. The device has a battery life of approximately 48 hours that can store up to 24 hours of continuous data. There are two electrodes on the back of the device. These electrodes are what actually measures your continuous ECG and they clip directly into either of the chest straps provided in the box. Now, let's take a look at the mobile app for the Frontier X2. The app allows you to start recording your activity, view your data in real time, as well as view your activity history and summaries. You can also get insights and recommendations about your heart health and the activities that you've done in the past. Let's start off by looking at the live stream ECG feature. Here you can share your live ECG with anybody in the world simply by clicking the start ECG sharing button while you are wearing the Frontier X2. Here is my continuous ECG recording and you can see that it also displays my heart rate at the bottom. With the Frontier X2 and the 4th Frontier app, I can send this to my doctor, coach, trainer, or anyone I wanted to take a look at my ECG while I'm exercising. Next, let's take a look at choosing an activity and setting some device alerts. You can choose from a number of activities that you want to perform, including running, cycling, rowing, swimming, and much more. You can then set specific device alerts so that you can stay in specific training zones and receive feedback either by a single buzz or a double buzz to let you know what zone you're in. Let's begin by setting a double buzz for heart rate. I'm going to select heart rate and then I'll set an upper limit of 170 beats per minute so that the device will buzz twice if I go over that 170 BPM threshold. This can help me train safely or train at a specific intensity in order to achieve my goals. Now that that's set for the double buzz upper limit, let's set a breathing rate for the lower limit with a single buzz. This will ensure that I stay above a certain intensity and I'll choose 28 breaths per minute. So now when I go and work out, I'll have a lower limit of 28 breaths per minute and an upper limit of 170 beats per minute. Let's go ahead and start my activity. Here's a time-lapsed activity that I recorded earlier today. You can see all my metrics on the screen displayed live. During your workout, while on the current activity screen, you can see and monitor your breathing rate measured in breaths per minute, your strain, which is the strain on your heart, measured in millivolts, your heart rate measured in beats per minute, your heart rate variability or HRV measured in milliseconds, your training load, your cadence, distance, and pace. Once you have finished your workout, you can go to the history section of the app to learn more about these key physiological metrics and your overall performance. Let's go take a look at that and I'll pull up my workout from today. Here's all my key metrics where you can see my heart rate, cardiac stream, and my insights for my workout which are auto-generated by the fourth frontier AI algorithms. These are the graphs for my workout today. You can see my heart rate and we can also look at things like my strain, breathing rate, shock, and cadence all throughout my workout. Here are all my heart rate alerts that I got where I was above 170 beats per minute. You can scroll through and see exactly what your heart rate was at any given moment during your workout. You can also compare this to another metric such as breathing rate by simply tapping on compare and selecting breathing rate. In this case, I'm able to see how my heart rate compared to my breathing rate during my workout. Next, let's take a look at training load. Training load can be seen from the home screen. Training load is simply a measure of intensity using breathing rate and heart rate. Typically, the higher your breathing rate and heart rate are, the higher your training load will be. On the home screen, you can also see all of your metrics from the previous 30 days, and below that, you can see recommendations for your next workout plus how to achieve your training load. At the bottom, you will see your latest activity analysis, which covers your activity intensity, your average strain, and your training load. Below that, you will see information that is posted regularly on the app, such as the form featured post. The Frontier X2 can also be paired with your Apple Watch, at which point you will be able to use the app on the Apple Watch to start and stop an activity without you having your phone with you. 
You can also monitor your key physiological metrics during your workout directly from your wrist. Alternatively, you can also start and stop an activity recording by double pressing the blue button on the Frontier X2. This will start or stop recording an activity without you having to have any device with you. After your workout, you can simply perform your data sync and you can access the mobile app or log on to the web app and take a look at your data. Let's have a look at the web app where you will have your training load metrics on the left, similar to how it was displayed on the mobile app. On this page, you will also be able to view your activity history where you can click on any one of your past workouts to get a more detailed breakdown of your physiological metrics while you were training. Here you get a good overview of the graphs displaying your ECG, heart rate, heart strain, HRV, breath rate, body shock, and step cadence. Further over, you can click on this drop down and access the link to share your ECG activity or your activity link with anybody like your trainer, coach, or doctor. You can also download your fit file. Now let's take a look at one of my recent workouts. Here you can see 20 seconds of ECG data at any given moment throughout my workout. If I scroll over with the cursor, you can see my ECG changing as I continue through my workout. And I can zoom in by clicking and dragging on the ECG. I can also use the caliper tool here to measure out different intervals in the ECG. Here I'll measure my QT interval. Now let's take a look at each of these metrics. First we have heart rate and I can scroll through and see what my heart rate was at any given point during my workout. Below that we have cardiac strain. The cardiac strain may explain a difference in the oxygen demands and the oxygen supply to the heart. You want to try to keep the cardiac strain minimal to ensure safe exercise. You can see here on the graph as long as you're in the green, blue, possibly even the yellow zone, your cardiac strain is healthy. Next, you will see the heart rate variability graph. HRV is simply the measure of the variations in time between each heartbeat. Again, you would like to see this measurement in the green or blue areas on the graph. Below that, you have breathing rate, and underneath that, you have body shock. Body shock is the amount of force that your feet strike the ground at whenever you're running. As long as you're in the blue, green, or the yellow zone, you're running safely. Next, we can see step cadence, which is the number of steps per minute you take. If I go back up here, I can see where my heart alerts were. I set an alert for around 170 beats per minute, and you can see I got a single red bar every time I exceeded that threshold and I would have also received a double buzz on the device at that exact moment during my workout. I set a lower limit for breathing rate and you can see on the graph where the dashed red lines appear every time I went below 28 breaths per minute. I took my Apple Watch with me on this run so you can see I have data about my altitude change and I have a map that shows the route I took. Here I can also add an activity note. I drank coffee before this run and I wanted to make sure that I recorded that here for future reference. Finally, up here, you can see different values for each one of my metrics. Here, I'm viewing my minimum values, but you can also see your average values throughout the workout. And if you click here, you can see your max values for each one of the metrics below. 